Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2022 Mazda CX-9. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed on your CX-9 and the great part is it is a hidden cross tube meaning the only thing that you're going to see is the business end of the hitch so you get a nice clean look but all the usability of your 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. And with that size, that's going to be the most common as far as hitches and accessories go. So that means you're going to have plenty of options when it comes to bike racks, cargo carriers, or even a ball mount for your vehicle. And all of them are going to stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip. Now this is not included with the hitch. A lot of times your accessories will come with one, but if you want to pick up a locking version, we have those available here at eTrailer as well. They're really nice because once you have your accessories loaded up, you can lock it in and know that no one's going to walk away with them. We have a plate style safety chain loop that's nice and wide open. So when you're planning on pulling a trailer, you can put your standard S hooks on there nice and easy. Even a larger Clevis style hook will go on there very simple as well. Now, as far as towing, this does have some decent weight capacities that you're gonna wanna adhere to. As far as your gross trailer weight rating, it's coming in at 4,000 pounds, and that's gonna be the weight of the trailer, plus the accessories loaded onto it. Now, you also have a tongue weight rating of 600 pounds, and that's gonna be the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. Now, this can be used with a weight distribution hitch. Those numbers are gonna stay the same. Now, as far as towing goes, you're gonna to wanna to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing and compare that with the hitch and also the accessories that you're using, like your ball and ball mount, uh, to make sure that you're not overloading any of those. Now, a few quick measurements from the center of our hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia. We're looking right at about five inches, and that's important for when choosing accessories, uh, especially folding ones. You want to make sure that it's able to stow in that upright position without making contact with your rear fascia. Uh, five inches is fairly decent. You should be okay to fold up that bike rack or cargo carrier. Just keep in mind, you may not be able to open your hatch with that in the stowed position. It's also important when choosing a ball mount to make sure that you have one that sticks out far enough to be able to hook up your coupler without making contact with the fascia. Now our ground clearance is coming in at 14 inches and that's gonna be important for when choosing a ball mount. You need to measure the coupler height of your trailer and with this 14 inch measurement, you can compare and determine if you need a rise or a drop. Now, with your suspended accessories, like your cargo carriers or bike racks, it's going to extend past the vehicle. So as you go up an incline, they do tilt towards the ground. So that's something to keep in mind when driving and going up an incline or on any rocky or rough surfaces. 14 inches, you should be pretty good as long as it's not super steep, but just keep that in mind when driving loaded up. Now, as far as installation goes, this one's pretty easy. You do have to remove a small little panel just with a 10 millimeter and some trim panel tools, and that's pretty easy. And lowering down your exhaust, there's just gonna be four isolators. But once that's down, you're simply gonna get your hardware put in the frame, raise the hitch up, and bolt it down. I'm gonna walk you through all those steps to make sure you get your hitch installed. So let's take a look at that. We're gonna begin our installation on the lower portion of our fascia where there's a small panel that we'll need to remove. And this is not gonna be going back up because once the hitch is in place, uh, th there's not gonna be a clearance for this. To remove it, there's gonna be a series of plastic push pins that we're gonna go ahead and pop off. And to get these removed, you can use a flathead screwdriver. There's a little notch there. Just kind of uh, pry in there. And if you need to do a twisting motion, that should help get this popped out. So go ahead, there's four of these. You're gonna to wanna to take those out. Now another helpful tool is gonna to be a trim panel tool. Um, and these really come in handy for prying these out. But either method's gonna to work to get these removed. Now there is a clip here uh, that attaches it to a bracket that's up there. We're gonna be removing the bracket as well. So to get this to separate, there's a little tab here. You can kinda of just push in and we should be able to get this to pop off. Um, you can see the tab on this back side here. And once I get this pried off, I'll show you. So this is what it looks like. And you can reach up here with a flat head and just pry that off, or you can even use your fingers to gain access to that. Now the bracket that we've removed those plastic clips from, if you kind of go up, you'll see a 10 millimeter screw. We'll go ahead and get those removed. And as I move this, you'll see that there is a plastic push pin. Uh, it's gonna be the center one out of the three. So you can go ahead and get that removed and that's gonna allow our bracket to come off. There's also a clip up top on our bracket. So we'll go ahead and get that popped off.
It's going to be very similar to what we had on these ones here. So once you pull those off, you can set these aside. Next, we'll go ahead and remove our exhaust isolators. And this is going to give us access to be able to pass our hitch up to get it uh, where we need to mount it up on the frame. And if you've never removed these before, a pry bar helps a lot here to get leverage. And also, if they're a little sticky uh, or not really wanting to move, what you can do is spray a little bit of a, either silicone or a, even a soapy water solution just to kind of help move this along. And that's going to make it a lot easier, especially if they've been on there for a while. Sometimes these get caked up and it can be a little bit tricky to pry them off. Now there's also going to be two more isolators that uh, we need to remove and those are going to be kind of tucked on the back side of the muffler but we do need to support our exhaust because there's no isolators pretty much all the way down uh, to where our catalytic converter is so we don't want the exhaust just hanging uh, it might cause damage so I'm using a, red, or a, a cam buckle strap here because I'm on a lift but you can use a box or just a block of wood make sure it's just not free hanging down um, so we'll go ahead and get these two popped off as well. Now we're gonna grab our fish wire, our carriage bolt, and our spacer block. And we're gonna start on this smaller hole that's towards the front of the vehicle. Take your fish wire with the coiled end and feed that coiled end towards this access hole near the rear of the vehicle. And once you kind of get a finger on that coiled end, pull that through the larger access hole. If you need to put some bends on here to kind of get it to be a little bit easier, feel free to do that. And I also put a bend on the tail end. This kind of helps prevent it from pulling through um, and also when we put our hitch up in place, this will kind of snap it in and make it a little bit easier. So at this point, we'll take our spacer block and just feed that over the coil. You can push this in the frame rail. And then our carriage bolt, you're just gonna want to thread on that coiled end. And then we'll grab our tail end here, feed our carriage bolt into the frame rail, and then just pull this back. And once you jostle it around a little, that should drop into the carriage bolt. Now we're going to leave our fish wire attached. This is going to help us when we put our hitch in place because if we uh, bump this up and it goes in the frame rail, we're going to have a little bit of issues. So keeping this attached until we have the hitch in place is going to be key. Now we have this one in place. Now we need to do a reverse fish wire technique on the access hole. So I'll show you that. Now this is pretty easy. The reverse fish wire, we're basically just feeding this up in the hole. So take your spacer block and just feed that over the coil and you can hold that in place. And then you can coil your carriage bolt onto that and then we'll just feed both of them up and then once we have both of those in the frame rail we'll just pull this down and now we have that in place so go ahead and repeat the same exact process on the other side of the vehicle now at this point, we're ready to get our hitch raised up. Now I have Aiden here helping me. I do recommend having an extra set of hands as it can be cumbersome. And what we'll do is we're gonna take the corresponding fish wires and put those through uh, each of the holes as we raise this up. And I also recommend having your serrated flange nuts ready to go. So with those carriage bolts passed in, we're just gonna get one of our serrated flange nuts started on each side. And that way the hitch will support itself up. Um, and then we don't have to uh, fight the other ones. Now, as far as getting these started without this pushing up, so you can put a little bit of pressure either using the hitch um, or your finger to just kind of get those threads started. Just make sure you don't push it up in the frame rail. So with one started on each side, now it's pretty easy to uh, lift our hitch up to get that to pass through so we can get this started. And then we'll just go through and get our other serrated flange nuts started. And with our hardware in place, we'll go ahead and tighten these down. Now make sure that it is pulled all the way down. Sometimes they can kind of get hung up on the spacer block or the carriage bolt can. So we want to make sure that this is tightening up properly. Now we don't need to get crazy here. Um, we're just going to snug it because we're going to come back with our torque wrench shortly after. Now with our torque wrench, we're going to use the torque settings found in the instruction manual to get these properly torqued. Now if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. 
And this is just an important step. It's going to make sure that it's going to be tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch, but also not too tight, putting stress on the threads of the carriage bolt. So go through and torque down all your hardware. Now once you have all your hardware properly torqued, all that's left to do is to get our muffler put back in place. So uh, raise this up and get your isolators popped back on. Now you can go ahead and remove whatever you had supporting your exhaust out of the way. And all that's left to do is load up your accessory and hit the road. And that was a look at installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Mazda CX-9.